Good morning, everybody. This is Richard back at you. We got David's 78 Peak Brothers Dragster. It's power glide in the house. Uh, this is going to be a, a new driver at this car. Uh, the, the gentleman's been racing for like three years at uh, Amor Dragway, and uh, he's stepping up to a dragster. Well, I'm going to let Teresa explain a little bit about the young man, uh, about uh, what he's been doing and stuff like that here at Amor Dragway, and, and that he's stepping up to uh, a lot more power than what he had before, so it's going to be exciting for him. Well, Teresa, you kind of explain to him a little bit about the gentleman. Yeah, so, okay, so David is the dad, so mm -hmm. Brayden is the son, mm -hmm. and he's going to be turning 20 on March 11th. Uh -huh. He is fixing to start his third season at Amarillo Dragway. There you go. Um, he's, he finished second in points in the sportsman class with um, his 87 Camaro, and he calls it Two-Face. Two-Face, huh? Two that's pretty neat. That's, that's pretty an cool. accomplishment right there to win, uh, finish second even. No doubt. And being as young as he is, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, you know, the dragster, we perch our Sam gave us that dragster, remember? Yes, yes. And then I don't know if they specifically purchased that dragster from us, but this dragster, it was a good friend of ours. Yes, it, it's a really neat car. It's yeah. a nostalgia dragster. Got the front wing on it, the back wing. I mean, it is really, really cool. I mean, the paint uh, job on it is still back from the 80s and stuff like that. It, the car physically hasn't been touched. It's been sitting in a, a barn, I think, about, gosh, probably 20 years, huh, Teresa? God, a probably long time. so, So they're yeah. having to upgrade it a lot, do uh, chassis certifications, new tires and wheels. I mean, they're going completely through this car uh, to get it ready for this gentleman to drive. So it's really going to be neat at the track to see something that old again. Yeah, and, and, and he's telling me that, um, so what they're thinking probably powered about five to 600 horsepower, um, small block, naturally aspirated right, with no power, no power adders. So well, that's pretty good for a light car. This car probably don't weigh 1,400 pounds, so you could imagine how, how fast this car will be. But this is the transmission that uh, he brought us to go through. We could have done this tranny back 25 years ago. I do not remember, you know, so it's really hard to say. Um, if, if, if you did, you're going to know exactly when yeah, you tear it, it down. Yeah, tear it apart. It's just going to be but that we, way. What we do is we have a shield here uh, that protects uh, the flywheel ring gear and stuff like that from coming through the bell housing. If you had an ultra bell on it like this, we can cut this bell housing off and put one of them on there, and then you do away with this shield here. Uh, the altar bell would be your shield. So this is just some early stuff that they had back in the day. But it, it still worked really good. You can see they're still SFI approved. Just like that. I've actually ran them on my car uh, back in the day too. So see where we're going to start the at. the upgrades and all the parts. Yep. You know, the faster and more power the transmission's got it. You got to protect yourself. Right. Now this is a, let me get this stuff off here. I know it's been a long time since this has been apart. Like I said, when I got it off Sam, it was sitting in the barn for a long, long time. He was tired of it sitting out there, it was just going to waste, and he wanted to see somebody have it. But he, he actually sponsored us the car for, on the Dirty Bird. We actually, he gave, he gave us the car, and then we sold the car uh, for the money to put into the car. So and that's what he wanted us to do. The other person that got it, I thought they were going to hang it on the wall. And just keep it for uh, just a nostalgia, yeah, because it is really cool. I wish I had a picture to show y'all what it looks like, because the old cars back in the day were totally different than what they are now, let me tell you. Well, we'll get to see it out of the track strip. Yeah. Dipstick tube there. Now this here is another shield too. 
This keeps the gear train inside the transmission housing <laughs> inside the case. If something ever happens, oh yeah, we got another one. I forgot about this one. Different pile. What about this? I think we got something over here too. I might have to go get another torque socket for. Yeah. Eh, maybe not. There we go. For an Allen socket. There we go. Anything else, Teresa? Some of these can be a bear. They'll get a 9 16 wrench. Got a lot of red stuff in here, Richard. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Oh, cars? Yeah. Let's see if I can get this off here. Let's see, these things, they don't is, bend. Is that on there? No, they shouldn't be. I don't think there's a bolt there, actually. It's just the way there's. They're kind of sprung in here. You got to kind of separate them and get them over the bolts and stuff so they fit really tight on the case. Kind of like what I just did. And then this side's going to be the exact same way. Let's see if I can take this one loose a little bit. Might help a little bit. Didn't know you were going to take the arm right. Well, every time I take one of these off, it's an arm It's wrestling. getting hung right here where it's looped over that, too. Well, no, I don't have to take all these apart to get them off. Well, if you can't get it off, nothing will go through it, right? All right. There we go. Now this is some type of stainless or something that just sets over here. Keeps, uh, if something ever blows up in the housing right here, it can't come through the floorboard of a car. So, hmm. pretty neat. And what we have here is our trans brake solenoid. Whenever you uh, put it into drive going forward or manual low, you've got your band that comes on. And then when you push the trans brake solenoid, it brings the low clutch on in the back and it physically locks it into two gears. It locks it into forward and reverse. Now this is the, what we call a quick release valve. Uh, some valves don't have a spring and uh, the valve just floats back uh, when you let off the trans brake by itself. But the quick release ones have a spring that physically pushes the valve back, that way it releases the clutch even sooner to take off on the starting line. 12 volt power coming from a button on your steering wheel. Push it, applies it, pretty neat. Special valves, you don't want to lose anything there uh, because of, they make multiple ones here for that. Now this, if you notice here, this is kind of weird. This piece right here physically goes right into the differential right into the, say, the yoke where your drive shaft would go on, this slides into a coupling. So this thing is actually just right, the rear end is right here. The yoke right here slides in here. Makes it easier to pull the tranny out and stuff like that. Looks really good still. Don't see any wear here on the splines or anything, but pretty neat. And we have our bearing support back here. Normally this would be where your tail housing goes. Your output shaft would be about this long for a normal vehicle. I have to tap it. There we go. You can see here you have a bushing here. I believe this bushing is the same bushing as is in a 350 uh, tail housing, so you can change the seal and the bushing. Bushing's getting really thin, almost into the brass it looks like. So, we have a gasket right here. 
some power glides would have another pump right here and the when they're original uh, back in the day you could push start the car on with an automatic uh, because the drive shaft would turn this pump and then you could pull it into gear and then turn start turning the motor over not all power glides had a pump back here though some of them did but the ones that did you could actually push start the car gasket look at that little bitty shorty shaft isn't that cute <laughs> yeah that's just darling isn't it darling so normally you'd have another support here that would have a bushing here your shaft would be this long and then your tail housing would be on there so you still would have another support that went on here similar to this but steel and it would be inside the tail housing when you put the tail housing on This is your band servo here. Anytime you run a trans brake, you want to run a dual ring servo. That way the band uh, plies really tight. The servo don't leak as bad around the ceiling rings and stuff like that. Come on. Now we like to run a billet cover right here. This is just a factory steel cover. Normally when we do a high performance job, uh, this would be a billet cover. Okay. Now normally we don't see this uh, when it's a trans brake. We don't run a single ring servo. We always do a dual ring. That way we have double sealing with the rings, which keeps a lot more pressure on the band, less leakage, you know, around the, the gap here and stuff like that. So. I would sure like to put a dual ring in there. It'd be a lot better for him. You want to look at your servo bore. Make sure there's no damage in here where your rings run. Check that out really good. Make sure your threads in here are good. A lot of, a lot of pressure on that cover. And then you have your band adjustment right there. What we do is we screw these in, uh, snug, say 12, 15 uh, inch pounds torque, and then we back it out about three and a half turns. Pretty simple to adjust these bands. A lot of people, they, they don't ever do it, and then the band fails and they wonder why. I'm gonna pull out the input shaft here. This should just pull out normally. Mm -hmm. I was going to show you the difference in a, come on, huh. we'll have to get to that in a second. Normally I can pull that shaft out just like I just pulled this one out of that power glide to show you the difference in the two splines. This is a turbo spline here where a 350 or 400 torque converter will fit back in this power glide. Well, the power glide has a core spline like this. We always do away with these shafts because these shafts are weaker. You start making, you know, a thousand plus horsepower, you know, you need to start uh, upgrading a little bit more to this soft shaft. We'll get it out here in a second and kind of look at it. But it physically should pull out. If it has a metal ring on there or something, the ring could uh, jump out and have it hung. We always use the Teflon rings like you can see here, the white rings, high pressure. Got a little bit of sludge in it not too bad anytime we rebuild a, a racing tranny I, myself personally will run it a weekend and then come in the shop and pull the pan off clean it out because all trannies make trash and then the next time we you know we can go a couple weeks without having to do it but you always want to run a high flow filter a brass style filter they make a little small filter too that's about half this size and that's a no-no, probably about that size. That's a little bitty filter, you don't want to ever use it. This is the one you want to use. But you always want to look here and make sure your filter's not pulling out. They're really bad about pulling out right here with a crimp. 
See all the trash around the gasket right here? All the metal? Mm-hmm. Luckily that gasket was in there. Remember that that 350 we did, the, the gasket was totally crooked on there. Yes, it was. Now if you run a deep pan, you'll have two gaskets. You'll have one here, the adapter, another gasket, then the filter. So just remember, anytime you have a deep pan, you'll need two gaskets. Filter is still, still cleanable, so it still looks really nice. You can see here, this is your detent spring right here. Holds it in park, reverse, neutral, whatever. That's pretty colorful in there, babe. It is beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right there. I always just try to turn this tab to where it keeps this lever rolling straight on the roller right here. Don't have it turned over where it's putting a lot of force to one side. Try to get it where it's perfectly straight, and you can do it by lining this tab up. Okay. Now this bracket right here is physically what's what keeps the manual valve inside the shifter linkage. You notice here it follows that groove. Take that off, this moves to the side and now it's not in there no more. Look at that. Okay. So you put that in there just like that. You bolt that on there and that's what holds that in that valve. Has to go back. Has to go back. Pretty simple. We have our beautiful valve body here. I like to look and see if there's any names on them or anything like that. Anytime they have a gasket on a trans brake valve body, you better be careful because if they expect, when you take the gaskets out of your, your overhaul kit, 90% of the time they use different gaskets. So these gaskets here will not work. So you gotta be careful when you take it apart not to tear them because you're probably gonna reuse them back. But some of them, the, the top one might be different and the bottom one will, will be like your factory one in, in the package. But you might have to make one hole opening. You'll have to put them on top of each other and look for any changes where they could have uh, drilled a hole in the, the gasket to use that factory gasket, like that 350 here the other day on the reverse manual valve body. One gasket was original, the other gasket was not. But the original gasket, when I laid their gasket over it, they enlarged, they, they made one hole, that's it. So if I'd have put that original gasket on there and didn't catch that one hole, the tranny would not have worked. So that's something critical you really got to look for. But you don't want to tear these gaskets. I'm not going to take this valve body apart right now. I'm going to do it when, uh, with, when I'm by myself and stuff. Very carefully. Very carefully. But like I said, uh, there's really nothing in here. There's usually no check balls or anything like that unless you have a billet valve body. You take this thing apart. Uh, you do have alignment bolts, this one here and this one here. Uh, clean it up, make sure the valves move, put it all back together. So, pretty simple on, on that part there. You can see the metal in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, which exciting. it could have come out of the converter. There's no telling where it come out of. Sure. This is your park linkage here. You see how that spring pushes it? Now it's in park up at the shifter, but the tranny's not in park. But when the car rolls forward just a little bit, locks right in. If they didn't have this spring there and you went to put it in park, you wouldn't ever get the shifter in park because it's not in the, in the locking part where it physically locks in. They use the spring, that way you can put it in park and then it pushes it in. So pretty simple. I do know that anytime you bolt this bracket down, you want to push this bracket all the way forward and make sure this lever is free but you want to push it all the way forward. These things are bad about not having park after you overhaul them. So you gotta be careful. I've learned to always just push that, this piece here forward. Sometimes I might even egg shape this hole a little bit. That way this will go forward a little bit. So. Got your spring. This little thing's a little different to put in there too. I mean, it's. Of course, now this is an aftermarket lever here. Normally we would have uh, another valve going through here where it would have a TV lever and a manual valve lever, but this is an aftermarket here. I think Cody just showed up. Annie, Cody's here. Yeah. He's working on the dirty bird. Hopefully.
Actually, it's going to go into the Make-A-Wish car show this weekend. Yeah. Isn't that right, Richard? Yes, ma'am. We're trying to get it all polished up. I'm sure the door locked or unlocked. I don't think it's locked, Let but you might check quick. it. <coughs> hey, you can't, go, you can't go get Cody. You just come on in. <laughs> yeah, Cody's here. He's coming in. So it's good to see Cody. He's going to be polishing up the Dirty Bird for the car show this weekend, so we're really excited to get that thing in there. Yippee! A lot of hard work. So here we go. We're going to pump both. They do have washers on them, just like your 350s. Got a coating on each side. You can... Replace them. I always put a little bit more sealing on there. How you doing, Cody? Pretty good. Pretty good. And yes, he's sir. excited to see you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that little girl's excited to see everybody. Now our pump bodies do have threads in them where you could screw a slide hammer in here. Set on each side. Start. There it goes. There we go. So I was really shocked that this would not come out of there. It still yeah, won't come still out. Won't come out. We have our pump gasket. No modifications are ever done to the gasket on any trans brake application or anything like that. And we do have our selective pump washer here. It uh, comes with uh, various uh, thicknesses. You have a little locking tab right here that sits in here. You always want to take and grab that tab if you can bend it a, just a little bit more where it sits down in there. Helps out a lot to keep from ever. Uh, if you don't get the clearance just right on this, this washer can come up because there's not much tab and it can start spinning. So that's why I like to take and bend the tab down just a little bit more. <laughs> Pump we're always worried about on these. The stator looks good. So I don't have my glasses on, but and my gloves on, that don't help me neither. But so far it looks pretty good there. You want to feel down in here where your ceiling rings run. These two rings run down in here. You want to make sure that's not all wore out. Pump gears. They only make two sets. They make the factory and one step bigger. So you can see here we got a lot of grinding on the outer edge of the pump gear, which is normal on these. Uh, anytime you put a trans brake in them, it maxes the pressure out in them and it just starts wiping the pump out. And, if, and, and it does it to all of them. It's really sad. If you look at this pump body from right here to about right through here, it look, from here to here especially, it looks brand new like the gear's never touched. But when you get over here, it just wore a plum out. There's probably a lip right here. It's just egg shaped the hole from here to here. And now this gear sets here and goes sideways like that. So there's not much surface area from here to here like a 400 has or a 350. And they'll do the same thing when you put a trans brake on them when you take the modulator off. Uh, anytime you max the pressure out, the pump's going to kick sideways. So they're really not streetable or anything like that. They're designed to be run down the track and towed back with a four-wheeler. And uh, that way it just makes your pump last a lot longer. So Yeah, you could see that. Yeah, the pump body's not good. Way. Stator's good, we can use it, but we're definitely gonna have to put a pump body and gears in it. Of course, we have our band here, really worn, especially on the edges. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing's cooked. Uh, we got brand new bands over there. Keeping all my cores, because I know someday they're, they're probably going to reline these. They haven't asked for cores back yet, so that's a plus. <laughs> well, that will not come out of there. Got to do something with that brass washer. That's a brass washer, not a bushing. Yeah, that's, excuse me, I'm glad you said that, a brass bushing. <laughs> <laughs> 
My mind's going 100 miles an hour. You're okay. Hey, you're lucky I've paid attention all these years. Yeah. <laughs> now we do have an uh, aftermarket planet. Uh, we have a hardened gear here, sun gear. The planetary down in here is totally, uh, the shaft's hardened and all that stuff. The gears are hardened. Let's get in here and see what we got for the clutch pack. I like to get as many clutches in here as possible, especially something making some power. One, two, three, four, just five. See, that that's actually has lasted, I don't know how. Just probably because it's a small block or something like that, but you can already see it's starting to get hot on these steels. Because this is just a stock clutch, stock thickness steel, nothing fantabulous. What's that word? What am I trying to say? Fabulous. Fabulous, there you go. So, but we would like to put a 9 clutch in here or a 10 clutch. That way we just know it never fails. So we'll be definitely upgrading this. It's just thinner clutches, thinner steels. You can stack it up a lot more. Now you, you do have to be careful though. Uh, if you get like a 10 clutch drum, uh, you have to have a 10 clutch hub because your clutches will be out here like this. There won't be no splines for it, so the, the hub is thicker. So you gotta be careful. And see that right there? That's supposed to just slide on and off. And that is why we have a problem. That will not slide off there. So we got to figure out why we'll cut that off, get it off there, look at the shaft and see if it's still good. But let me show you the difference in the shafts. Turbo spline, non-turbo spline. And if you notice here, we have metal ceiling rings, which we would never do that. So this isn't my training. I've never done this. I've never done this unit. We would have never put a, a steel ring in here. It would always been a tough one like this one here. These are high, high pressure rings here. This one is not. Now they also make what we call a, a ringless shaft where there's no ceiling rings here. Uh, the shaft is just solid. That way it can't break where they square cut the groove out or anything like that. And they actually uh, added uh, bushings in here for the seals. The, the shaft has areas for bushings to run and they used the two bushings for seals instead of the ring. So definitely a lot weaker. Look how tiny that is right there even. Mm -hmm. So 1,000 horsepower, one trip down the track or maybe not even off the starting line. That shaft would give up instantly. How you want to look at your ceiling ring wear in here. Make sure you don't get it down here on the edge. You can see that ring's been really close to the edge. Mm -hmm. So you want to check your clearances. Like I said, if you can move this drum closer to the stator, this direction, and use a thinner shim here, it's better. But you have to stack it different down in here. You might have to put a spacer under this bearing right here. So you might have to put a small thrust washer under here to move everything forward a little bit and try to get this ring farther down in here. Anytime you get an aftermarket planet, the ring gear is going to be a, a really high tempered. The factory ones just go thud. <laughs> now, of course, this planetary here is what we call a shorty shaft. Oh, wow, it's already twisted. Wow, it's fixing to break off. Oh, it is. Look at it. It's fixing to break off right there. Oh, it's yeah. Buff. Well, that's not Wow, good. it's twisted all the way up to here. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Almost looks like it's cracked. Oh, that's sad. Yes, it is. Wow, right there. Yeah. So this piece is totally no good. That was fixing to break off. Another few more passes, that was gone. So it must not have been. This could have been just a. I can't. I don't like using cheap because anytime they do aftermarket, it's better than factory. So it can't be cheap. But they do make upgraded materials multiple levels of this planetary right here to where this shaft would never break. Uh, my blower truck, I thought I had the best shafts and stuff in it, and the very first or second pass, we twisted the input shaft off and 
we twisted the splines on the output shaft. We had to go to a Vasco input shaft and a Vasco output shaft, and, and we never had a problem with it. But I remember that first day at the track with my blower truck, it just popped that shaft in. So you could hear the shaft break over the motor. You could hear the ping of the shaft twisting off over a blower motor. That's pretty hard to believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we do have our lower low clutch down here. I was wondering if there was anything else left in there. Yeah. This snap ring can go in any direction. You just want to put it in with this end first. That way, this end will go in. If you put this in first, this will try to hit here. So it's got to go in and then set in there like that. Okay. Of course, we just have a four clutch low gear too. You know, your trans brake, this is the clutch that comes on and holds it from moving forward. So you definitely want to get at least, you know, five or six, seven in there. So that piston will have to be replaced to get more clutches down here because this is really weak. You know, this thing, he might have had four or hundred horsepower, five hundred before, but if he had 50 more horsepower, this clutch might give up instantly. It might just not be able to clamp and hold it. So that's an upgrade we got to do. We're going to have to upgrade this clutch pack here, get a whole nother planetary assembly, get a pump body and gears, clean it all up and make it brand new again. So, so anyway, guys, it's always a, a job, a job, a job, huh, Teresa? Yeah. It's just different. Every time we tear one apart, it, it's just amazing uh, what we find, what's going on in these units. I don't even know where to go on this one. It's going to take a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised it's going to need that much. But uh, we just have to call the customer and see what he wants to do. We want to thank you for recording, Teresa. We just love you to death. And Cody. Woohoo! We appreciate Cody back there, guys, definitely. Y'all stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Push that notification bell. Plenty more to come. Have a great day.